are the open road, is there anything better for a landscape photographer? I've packed my camera bag, loaded my camper van and we are heading north on a photography adventure that will see vibrant autumnal colour. It's just glowing golden brown. Mountaintop sunrises, ferocious storms. Ah, okay. I think we need to get to the van oh. and find a park up because this is brutal. <laughs> Laughs and tears. <laughs> is that how you slept? Yeah. Let the journey begin. So the official autumnal Scotland landscape photography road trip is well underway and I'm driving all the way to the far northwest of Scotland but it's too long of a journey to undertake in one go so I'm breaking it up and I've stopped halfway ish. Not exactly sure where I am but I know that I'm in the Trossachs National Park and I've pulled into this little wooded car parking area and intriguingly, as I pulled in, lay in front of me this boardwalk that just seems to go off into the distance. Now, I have no idea what's down this boardwalk, but I can tell you right now, I'm gonna get my camera, we're gonna walk down it, we're gonna use this last hour of light and hopefully, maybe, take a photograph. If not, at least we'll get a feel for the area. So I was thinking about parking up here for the night, but uh, I just don't, I don't have a good feeling about it. It's quite close to this private residential road and I'm concerned that if I park up here for the night, then the local residents might be a bit, you know, a bit suspicious. So I followed that footpath and after a couple of hundred yards it actually spat me out at another car park by a main road which just so happens to be running alongside this beautiful lock and I'd love to tell you what lock it is, I haven't got a clue, <laughs> I haven't got a clue, I really should pay more attention to where I'm going. So aside from the road which is like 10 feet this way, it's beautiful, the lock is beautiful but, and this is a big but, it's not overly photogenic like there's no real focal point on the horizon and there's not a great deal going on in the sky and there's a bit of a breeze so most of the water is covered by ripples. However, when I find myself in a situation like this, it always helps, it always pays to look down at your feet, look at the shoreline, look at the trees, look for intimate details, textures and patterns and well, you might just see an image. And that is exactly what we've done. I sound like a TV presenter, don't I? And that is exactly what we've done here, ladies and gentlemen. So I might be getting a little bit ahead of myself with this image, but I love this. This for me, this is what photography is all about. I love taking images that most people would walk past. This beautiful clump of reeds or grass, completely isolated. And it just has such a nice shape to it, such a nice abstract shape to it. And what got my attention initially wasn't the, the grass growing out of the water, it was actually the, the grass that seems to have collapsed, which fans out at the bottom of the, uh, what should we call it, subject? Yeah, the bottom of the subject. Um, I stuck a polarizer on, that, uh, that helps a lot, let me show you. If I spin the polarizer, you can see, we can hardly see the grass, and what we're getting is a whole load of reflection of the sky above, nothing really beneath the water. But if we spin the polarizer, you can see how dark that goes, and all of a sudden the grass becomes this beautiful autumnal yellow golden colour and we can begin to see the leaves beneath the surface of the water. Uh, yeah, I like this image. It's simple, it's straightforward, it's anonymous and for me that's the type of photography that I enjoy at this time of year. Images, again, that most people would walk past.
Right, so I've had a change of heart. <laughs> I've had a change of heart. Initially, I said that I wasn't too sure about staying in this area, in this car park. And um, that's just because there's a private road here, that's all. But after speaking to a couple of local guys who were walking just through here as I was setting off, they actually assured me that um, it's fine and that actually I'm in the middle of nowhere um, and there's like hardly any residents around at all. So um, yeah, pretty happy about that. What I'm gonna do though, I'm gonna move the van because uh, I think I can tuck myself away into a little corner just over here. It just feels slightly more out of the way and as well as that, um, there's mud everywhere by my van around here. So we'll move the van. I think we'll settle in for the evening and hopefully it'll be all quiet. We'll see. Get a bit of privacy. Useless. Pegs that are so strong, when you open them, they snap. <laughs> oh, okay, so that is the van looking nice and cozy with the curtains closed. It's getting dark now, I'm getting hungry. It's also getting cold, it's getting cold. Um, it's starting to change. Um, I think we're gonna be sub-zero tonight. So, I bought myself, I thought I'd try a little heater. I've got this new little heater. Now, this van has a diesel heater and it's fantastic and it heats the van beautifully. Um, I absolutely love it, but the problem with the diesel heater is it's not very stealthy. You know, the exhaust, you can hear the exhaust outside. It also takes a while to go in. Um, and, you know, it's when you put the diesel heater on, it's a commitment, you know. Um, and I just wanted something that could give me instant heat for 10 minutes, maybe while I get dressed in the morning and make a coffee, something like that. So I went onto Amazon and I bought this. It's a little desk fan heater and it's only 250 watts so I'm not expecting any kind of <laughs> any kind of competition for the diesel heater but it might just give me that little something uh, to warm up the van this is a small van so I'm excited to try this out so that's kind of cool if it's any good I'll let you know and if it's absolutely rubbish I'll also let you know All right, so, I feel like I can get settled now. Can you believe, can you believe it's only 20 past five? 20 past five, man, pitch black. Those winter nights, they're drawing in. All right, cheese and salmon. Mm. Yep, it's gonna fill a hole. And now for the pièce de résistance. Oh, oh yes. Now, I don't like to show off on this channel, or I believe as the kids call it, flex. Don't like to flex on this channel, but I can't help but show off a little bit that today's sponsor is <laughs> a beer sponsor. I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not even ashamed. I'm not even bothered about this video being sponsored, you know? A beer sponsor, you tell me. Any YouTuber who would turn down the opportunity to be, to be sponsored, <laughs> I've only had a sip, the opportunity to be sponsored by beer. Come on, come on. So the company sponsoring this video, they're called Beer52, and they're a beer subscription service. And if you go to beer52.com slash Heaton, you can get a free case of beers. All you've got to do is pay postage. And that is, uh, yeah, apologies, that is UK customers only, so, it doesn't apply to uh, my international viewers, so my apologies to all you guys. But if you're in the UK, you can sign up and you can get, you get basically you get eight craft beers, different beers every month, plus a couple of snacks as well and a magazine, so I believe. And you can also alter your preference. So you can go from light beers or dark beers and that kind of thing. The best thing though for me is that you can pause it at any time, which is pretty cool. And I thought with Christmas coming up and the fact that you can sign up and just pay postage and get a free case of eight beers exactly like what I have here in this van today, 
Um, I mean, it's going to sell itself, isn't it? I don't need to promote this at all. But I am still going to be gleeful that I, Thomas Heaton, has a beer sponsor. <laughs> Come on. We're moving forward in the world, ladies and gentlemen. We are climbing the ladder, the corporate ladder. Good morning, everybody. It's cold. <laughs> it must have dropped below freezing last night. Uh, it's about mm, 10 to 6 in the morning, nice and early. I've got to say, this, uh, this little heater, it takes the edge off, but that's all it does. Like, I can't, I can't imagine this heater warming the entire van, but it certainly warms this area. So that's, uh, that's quite nice. Um, I'm going to give it, like, two out of five like you can put your hand it's not hot it doesn't you can't there's no possible way you can burn anything it's just warm uh similar to my kettle just here so yeah it's all right 30 quid takes the edge off that's my uh that's my final review <laughs> anyway making a cup of tea bit of breakfast and then uh we'll set off oh, get hiking looks good outside i can see stars that's good enough for me the view. <laughs> that is a view. Whew. See, the, the difficulty I'm having is um, trying to shoot a composition that hasn't been shot many times before, because this is a popular location. Hang on, down here, hang on. Oh, so <laughs> this view is gorgeous. I am, um, I didn't really want to come and shoot the big view, if I'm being completely honest. I didn't want to come up here and shoot the big view. I thought I would find my own unique composition, but that is a little bit arrogant of me, I think, because when you get up here and you see that view and the autumnal colors and the light, it's just absolutely phenomenal. So I'm just shooting the view. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna get hung up on whether or not it's an original composition. You know, I don't really think that's uh, that's worth thinking about after the, the long hike up here. So I'm just gonna shoot this gorgeous view with the beautiful light. And then once I've got this, I'll go on and see if I can find something else. But the way the morning light is, we're looking towards the west, so the sun's rising behind us just popped a polarizer on I'm at f11 i've got no foreground interest to worry about being sharp so i'm just focusing to infinity a little bit of a polarizer lovely view nice colors and it's as simple as that difficult to resist this shot So the sun's coming up now. As you can see, I'm, I'm probably blown out. <laughs> um, I'm starting to relax a heck of a lot more. I was a bit, a little bit, not agitated, but I was just super keen to get a shot this morning. Let me turn you down, hang on. Yeah, there we go, yeah. I was really keen to get an image this morning. Um, you know, when you put in the effort of a big hike, you want to get something at the end of it. <laughs> so anyway, I've turned my camera and I'm pointing down towards some beautiful trees here in the distance. Now, 
We've got these silver birch trees that are glowing with their yellow leaves down on the ground in the valley. And the sunlight, as it's coming up, is just kissing the trees. I tell you what, I mean, <laughs> it's bright. I'm having a great time picking out different clusters of trees from the woodland below. This is fantastic. I'm just using my long lens to sweep around looking for compositions and patterns where the light is falling on the landscape. It's absolutely fantastic. It's a great way to do photography. I'm enjoying myself here and it's, it's those intimate shots, those more anonymous shots that I really enjoy uh, rather than the big view, which is nice. But I think if I got an epic image of the big view versus you know a nice image, of an anonymous scene below the big view. I think I'd be more satisfied with the anonymous scene. Does that make sense? I feel like, um, yeah, I just, I just feel m much more comfortable and content. I can lose myself in photography when I start pointing my camera down at uh, the forest below with the light hitting the trees. Whereas when I'm looking at the big view, I struggle to lose myself. Um, don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, I'm gonna put a couple of these images on screen because I'm having a lot of fun shooting this beautiful woodland hundreds of feet below. So I'm just making my way back down now towards the van. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I got about nine hours sleep last night, so I feel really good. But honestly, waking up in the dark, hiking up a mountain and being rewarded with a, a beautiful view is, is incredible. I think everybody should do that. Um, and that's what, I think that's one of the things that makes landscape photography so great, is that it's not necessarily the photography, but it's the fact that it gets you out. It gets you out doing things that I suppose ordinarily you might not do, like hiking up a mountain for sunrise. There's not many people do that, only photographers. <laughs> um, so yeah, I feel really good. The photography was quite enjoyable as well. Picking out those birch trees and the light on the woodlands below with the long lens, I really, really enjoyed that. But for now, I'm gonna get back down, have some breakfast, and then I've got a long drive north. So make sure you join me next week as I head to the far northwest of Scotland and we continue this road trip. I'm gonna be on the road for, I don't know, anywhere from four to seven days. It depends on how I feel, it depends on the weather. So very much looking forward to this Scotland in autumn. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy what is to come. So, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna end it there before I kill myself. See you later next time, maybe. Uh, why can't I just end these videos? All right, over and out, bye bye.